Hey guys, welcome back. So it has been quite a while since I've done a Where Is, which if you don't know, um, Where Is is a series that I do on my channel and it talks about different missing persons cases. It's been a cool series because not only are these cases very interesting, um, it's so important to get these stories out to people, as many people as possible. And I just figured as a YouTuber, the least I can do is try to use my platform to you know, share some of these stories. And today we're gonna be talking about the case of Chiron Horman. So I have been following this case for a little over a year now and it's really, really crazy because today is actually May 25th and you are seeing this a week later, but the day that I'm filming this is May 25th and it is National Missing Children's Day. And I didn't even know this, but this morning, literally I just saw this posted to the internet an hour ago, Chiron's mom actually gave a speech and in that speech she said something that really hit home for me she touched on how important it is to get stories like this out there and bring awareness to them my name is Desiree Young and for those of you who may not know me already I my son is Kyron Horman some days the hope that our child will come home is all that keeps us going it is our job as parents to keep our child's case in the public eye when there's not regular media coverage some cases get forgotten. I hope that you take our story and go back to your homes and download flyers and photos and share them, not just of Kyron, but of all missing children and persons in the state of Oregon. Get more involved. Please share their stories. All it takes is one person to see his face and report that tip that could bring him home. And it just made me feel even better about filming this today. Um, after seeing that from her, I truly felt like I was meant to talk about Chiron today. And I have a very strong feeling that this case will be solved. Um, fairly soon, honestly, in my opinion. I mean, obviously no one knows the future, but I do think it's possible. So I'm ready to start telling you guys about the case and everything that happened with it. But before we start that, I have two little announcements. Number one, and this is really exciting. The main reason that I haven't done a Where It Is video in a while is because I've been waiting for a project that I've been working on to fall all together and fall into place. So I'm really excited to tell you guys about it. I wanted to do something positive with these Where it Is videos. You know, it's great to spread awareness and everything, but how can we do something positive to actively help you know missing and exploited children so I have found an organization called Thorn which is actually founded by Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore but the right to pursue happiness for so many is stripped away it's raped it's abused it's taken by force fraud or coercion it is sold for the momentary happiness of another my day job is as the chairman and the co-founder of Thorn. We build software to fight human trafficking and the sexual exploitation of children. I've seen video content of a child that's the same age as mine being raped by an American man that was a sex tourist in Cambodia. In six months, with 25% of our users reporting, we've identified over 6,000 trafficking victims, 2,000 of which are minors. This tool is in the hands of 4,000 law enforcement officials and 900 agencies. And we're reducing the investigation time by 60%. This tool is effective, it's efficient, it's nimble, it's better, it's smarter. But it's an amazing organization that is focusing on innovative tools and technology to possibly solve and help children that are being sexually exploited online, which as you guys know, many um, missing persons cases, the people often end up in sex trafficking. This is all about developing new technology to stop people from doing that. The sex trafficking industry is huge and the US is actually the number one producer of child pornography. So Thorn is all about creating new and innovative technologies that will help be able to solve some of these cases quicker, track down online predators. They are doing truly amazing work and their donations actually break down like this exact amount that they would need to do certain things and you can see exactly where your money is going. So anyway, I thought it would be cool if we could focus in on Thorn, you know, make it my channel's mission to help Thorn and to aid in this new technology development, which is just so important. Well, I have come up with a new idea to sell limited edition merch and 100% of all of the profits that we make off of these uh, shirts and t-shirts and stuff are going to go to Thorn, 100% of it, which is so cool. So I am not a very artistic person, so I reached out to my subscribers via social media and asked if any of them are graphic designers that would like to be part of this project, and I got so many responses, so thanks to everyone who went ahead and filled out a response. We have a few designers, and each one of them has made a design that they think is fitting for this channel in whatever way they see. Maybe that's body positivity or investigation or conspiracy theories or whatever it is. I asked them to make a design 
design that represents them as an artist and and each time I put out a where is video there will be a new set of merchandise available that will be limited edition for 21 days from the day that this video is posted this month our designer was Brandon he is super super nice he actually has a YouTube channel that I'm gonna link below I hope you guys can go maybe check it out and support him since he created this awesome piece for us for the project and this is what he designed I am so obsessed with this design you guys how cool I am definitely gonna be ordering one once the campaign launches I think they come in t-shirts and some hoodie options there's a couple different options there's a link in the description box if you want to check them out and what's so cool is if you really like this series and you really feel passionate about thorn you can purchase it every single time that I post a where is video and collect them all so I'm gonna definitely be getting them all because they're all limited edition things that you'll never see anyone else have because they're designed by subscribers to this channel I just think it's such a cool way for us all to get involved and give back and I'm excited to you know see how much we can raise for thorn because I will be keeping a running total so I hope you guys are as excited about that as I am um, one other thing I did want to say I don't know how many of you have seen my video on Kristen smart but it was the second missing persons video that I did and I actually heard back from her family and they were really really grateful for the video they said that I did a better job than most you know reporters have done so it meant a lot to me I guess her mom was really happy with it and they reached out to me again recently and wanted me to share this information with you guys that they have now decided to make the Kristen Smart website which used to be a missing persons website and they're actually trying to make that a foundation so if you're interested in that there'll be a link to Kristen Smart's foundation in the description box as well as a new website called dig up the yard which is all about convincing the police to finally dig up the remains of Kristen Smart in the location which most of us think that they are I'm sorry I know that was a really long introduction we can go ahead and get into the Chiron Horman case now I just had a couple things that I had to share with you guys Okay, so Chiron Horman. Chiron Horman was born on September 9th of 2002, and he disappeared on June 4th of 2010. And when he disappeared, he was only seven, so he'd be quite a bit older now. He's the kind of son that every father hopes they're gonna have. He likes to get dirty. He's definitely a typical seven-year-old that gets dirty all the time. He was actually taken from his elementary school, Skyline Elementary School in Portland, Oregon, on that day, and nobody knows what happened or where he went ever since. He was only in second grade. And his father is named Kane Horman. And Kane actually had cheated on Desiree while she was pregnant with Chiron, which was pretty crazy. They actually both got remarried and lived in separate houses in separate areas. Kane actually remarried a woman named Terry and Terry actively raised Chiron because Chiron ended up living with Kane and Terry um, for all of his life. It's not because Desiree was a bad mom or anything. They both got remarried to people who had kids from other marriages so there was other kids involved. Desiree was sick with severe kidney problems. I had gotten to the point where I was in the hospital usually three or four times throughout the year. Your kidneys were failing? Yeah. I was so sick um, that I was passing out at times. Iron would, you know, hurt himself if I happened to have passed out. Desiree says she went to Canada for treatment and gave Kane temporary custody of Chiron. But when she got back, still recovering and drowning in medical bills, they decided together that Chiron would be best off staying with his dad. Felt like it was best for Chiron to stay with his dad. They were really, really close. And friends say Terry was an attentive stepmom, active in Chiron's school. Chiron's mom would visit him often in Portland, or Chiron would make the trip on weekends and holidays to her house five hours south in Medford, Oregon. I think even though she had, you know, separated from Kane, she knew Kane was still a really good dad and felt like that was the best place for him. She since has said that she regrets this. So Terry actually had an older son from a previous marriage, and he lived with them for a brief period of time. However, Kane and him were not getting along, so he was actually kicked out, and that has really nothing to do with anything but it's an important fact you should probably know. They also have a daughter together named Kiara. Chiron had a science fair at his school. He was in second grade and they did some type of science fair and he actually did a project on tree frogs and this is a picture of him. This is actually the last picture of him which is very odd because he's wearing a CSI shirt but I just noticed that that was kind of weird but anyway that day Terry Horman brought him to school. Normal, normal day just nothing out of the ordinary. Got to school about um, 8.15 I believe. It was kind of like an open house-ish type thing that day. You know, there wasn't a lot of security going on, but this is also 
you know, a little while ago, but it was a science fair, um, and I had science fairs and stuff like that too, where the doors were just open and parents were able to come in and out and see the projects and stuff. So school actually wasn't starting that day till 10 a.m. However, Terry brought him to the science fair, stayed for a little bit. And uh, there's the infamous picture I took of him. Took that picture, and then she says that she left at 8.45 a.m., which was still an hour and 15 minutes before classes started. And she says the last time she saw Chiron, he was walking down a hallway towards his classroom and she was going the opposite direction to her car. There's two levels to the school. Right. Okay. So his his is on his class is on top. And so he went up the stairs by the office and I went up the stairs that are by the gym and then um, so I've got the baby and I'm here is a diaper bag and so he beat me up, you know, the stairs and then he was going down the hallway. I stood I saw him go. I stood at the top um, and watched him right at about as he got to his door, to his, his classroom door. The back, I saw, the last thing I remember is the back of his head. Okay. Right, right, by the, right by the stairs. His, his door to his classroom is right where you can see the, the stairwell, the line for the stairwell. Uh -huh. That's where his, his class is at. Once the first class started, the teachers realized that Chiron was not there. But he was marked absent, and no one at the school decided to contact Terry or Kane or Desiree and let them know that Chiron wasn't at school. Because normally when a younger kid doesn't show up to school, they, they normally call and check just in case they got lost walking to school or something happened. So anyway, that was kind of bizarre. Chiron was normally supposed to get off the bus at home at 3.30 and when he didn't get off the bus at 3.45, Terry freaked out and called the school. Once they realized that he wasn't at school that day, they immediately reported him as a missing person. This wasn't just a temporary mix-up. Chiron was really missing. The school secretary dialed 911 and then an automated call went out to parents in the Portland School District. Skyline second grader, Chiron Harmon, did not arrive home from school today. That call set off shockwaves of disbelief. I'm very worried, and I hope he's okay. So that's really, really bizarre, and some people have brought up the idea of, well, maybe he just left. Well, according to his teachers and family and friends, none of them believe that, because they said that Chiron was actually a pretty timid kid. He was kind of shy and not super outgoing, and no one really thought he would just leave the school. Gina Zimmerman, a parent from Skyline, says the Chiron she knows would never just walk out of school, especially on such an important day. So that's been kind of ruled out. Obviously, when the police came, they questioned all of the parents, because in situations like this, oftentimes children are taken by someone they trust. So they obviously were very interested in Terry's. Desiree and her husband drove a couple hours from where they lived all the way to meet with Kane and Terry and the police. As search teams started combing the area, Chiron's mother Desiree and her husband Tony raced up to Portland from their home in Medford, Oregon. When they heard the awful news, they had called Chiron's stepmother Terry Horman just before jumping in the car. I had told her I'm coming up there and she said you are and she seemed surprised at that, which I thought was strange said, of course I am. I'll be there in, you know, four, four and a half hours. They were completely devastated. You can see from these photos, they just look absolutely upset, all four parents. Byron's parents, all four, appeared in public for the first time. Members of the family stood side by side. Look closely and you can see some interesting body language between Kyron's mother, Desiree, on the left in the sweater, and his stepmother, Terry. She reached, she put her arm around you at one point. Mm -hmm. It's a little strange for your ex-husband's new wife to be hugging you and caressing you. and It just seemed strange to me. That strange feeling for Desiree had been steadily growing into full-blown suspicion. It started when all four family members submitted to lie detector tests. Tony tells Dateline he noticed right away that something wasn't gelling for detectives because they asked Terry Horman to submit to a polygraph more than once. What's really strange is Terry in her statement claims that she saw a stranger in the school, which is super odd because wouldn't most of the people in the school be strangers to her? Most of these other parents, unless she knew every other parent. She couldn't describe this stranger. She just remembered seeing someone there, um, which I just think is kind of odd to have even brought that up. So the police obviously asked her to recount that whole day and account for where she was the entire day. And this was her exact statement to police. She said that she left the school around 8.45 a.m. and she ran errands at the local grocery store till about 10.10 a.m. Between 10.10 a.m. and 11.39 a.m. She states that she drove her 
her daughter around town in an attempt to use the motion of the vehicle to soothe the toddler's earache. She then states that at 11.39, she went to the local gym and worked out till about 12.40 p.m. And by 12.21 p.m., she had arrived home and posted pictures of Chiron at the science fair earlier that day. The woman spoke to Terry the day Chiron went missing and she calls the encounter odd. Andrea Lecky ran into Terry Horman here at the Fred Meyer Long Walker Road the day Chiron disappeared. I think the only thing that seemed odd about it perhaps is that we were just passing each other by and she like in a few seconds with her daughter being sick in her arms made it a point to show me the photo. Mm -hmm. The photo Terry showed Andrea was the now famous picture Terry took of Chiron in front of his science fair project. So if you haven't already figured it out, um, Terry is a pretty suspicious person in this whole case and most people who follow this case believe that she had something to do with Chiron's disappearance. Now I want to say up front that I do not know that Terry Horman is responsible for this. I do not know that 100% to be fact but I think after you listen to a bit more of this video you may realize that it's quite possible she had something to do with Chiron's disappearance. Those first hours of crisis Desiree had an unsettling feeling that maybe she wasn't hearing the full story. There was something in my gut that just didn't feel good. First of all, people at the school have told Desiree that they saw Terry leaving with Chiron. According to eyewitness accounts, multiple adults that can vouch for the fact that Terry walked out the side entrance of the school with Chiron in tow. We know this because Chiron's friend even saw him with her right outside the school. According to Desiree, people told her that she took pictures of Chiron at the science fair and then immediately took him in the car and left. Terry has had really inconsistent statements to the police, which has been really frustrating. Desiree's husband used to actually work in law enforcement, so he said that he prepared the, all the parents for how this was gonna go. Tony has had a unique perspective from day one. He's not only Chiron's stepfather, he's also a police detective back in Medford. Tony says that first night, because he knows so much about how police operate, he was walking the family through what to expect. I explained to each, each person that now our lives are not private anymore, that the investigators are going to want to know uh, very detailed information about our lives. He says Terry, Kyron's stepmom, seemed to bristle at the idea that she would be questioned. This is when the two of them say they started to notice Terry acting super weird. Instantly started to express some displeasure at that and and uh, not wanting, feeling like she was persecuted. And I thought that was kind of an unusual uh, reaction that early. Not seeming to be very interested in the police being up in her business. They talked about polygraphs and she didn't want to take one. In fact, she ended up taking polygraph tests and she failed two polygraph tests. There was actually a time where she refused to take a polygraph test. Don't care if they ask you to take 10 polygraphs, you've got to do it. And has just always had very strange behavior. There's been a lot made of the fact that you've taken three polygraphs. Polygraph operators have reported that you failed the first two polygraphs and that you walked out in frustration on the third. One of her reasons for failing it was that she is deaf and couldn't see the person asking the questions and couldn't lip read them. So the, the first one was approximately an hour long. I'm very hard of hearing, virtually deaf in my left ear, so I have to look at people when I talk to them to understand what they're saying. He was behind me when he was doing the first polygraph. I have to see the context of the person, what they're saying, their facial expression, it helps a lot. And the other one she blames on the actual administrator of the test, said that they didn't do a good job of doing it. So as the investigations went on, Desiree and her husband said it was very obvious that Terry was not interested in being questioned and did not like this whole thing. Retired FBI agent George Houston, he said she didn't show the kind of emotions he'd expect from a mom who'd lost a child she loved. At some point in going down that mental checklist on someone that you've lost, there is going to be an emotional impact somewhere in that list that's going to break you down. This did not happen. Which just kind of points to suspicion in the first place. You'd think if this was your son that you pretty much raised most of his life that you'd be, you know, wanting to do anything that you can to help. If it were me, I would take as many polygraphs as I needed to. And another really strange element to this is that Terry's cell phone records did not match up with where she said she was during the day. Like the times did not match up. It was enough for Desiree to finally say in public what she had been thinking in private for weeks. We implore Terry Horman to fully cooperate with the investigators 
to bring Kyron home. I absolutely believe that Terry Horman is responsible for Kyron's disappearance. In the past, Terry has been arrested for drunk driving. I thought I might as well share her previous record with you guys. She actually had her son in the car, so she had to plead to reckless endangerment. Five years ago, she was convicted of drunk driving and pleaded guilty to reckless endangerment because her older son was in the car with her at the time. She also had some very, very interesting behavior after Chiron had first gone missing. While the world's been out looking for Chiron, allegedly his stepmother has been busy with other things. Dozens of emails, including graphic photographs. Very, very soon after he went missing, she was already having a texting, a sexting, sorry, a sexting relationship with Kane's, one of his old friends from high school. Kane and Terry live right up the street from me. Cook is an old high school friend of Kane's. They recently reconnected. Come to find out, according to the court documents, that Michael Cook was having an affair with Terry Horman. Court papers allege Terry and Michael Cook exchanged sexually explicit text messages and pictures. Cook has admitted to KGW that he sexted with Terry, but denied having sex with her. I'll put in some of the clips of Dr. Phil talking about this with her. You say, whatever, like I'm going to get any ever again. Uh, tell Jason Statham I'm available for whatever. I'll pin you down and sit on you. Insert evil grin with latex. Whoops, did I say that out loud? If you didn't have your son tonight, I would show you what I think of you. I grin, going to bed, underwear and tank top. Think about that. Do you want a pic? Then you send a photo and say, that's only the left one. Aim to please. Did you want something bigger? Another photo. I want you so bad. I don't know what it is about you, but I'm very attracted to you give me 15 minutes and I will make you moan does that seem like a mother figure I mean Terry was definitely like a mother figure in Kyron's life does that seem like something a mother figure would do right after their child goes missing just like have a texting sexting affair it's unbelievable a few weeks after Kyron went missing Kane actually moved out of the house and media caught wind of this and made this huge deal about it and so police actually released information about why he did that and it's very interesting the day that Kane moved out of the house, he was informed by police about some information, and the information was this. This guy came forward to the police station when he saw Terry and this whole thing going on and claimed that a little while back, Terry had hired him as a landscaper to kill her husband for her. Kane says police informed him of a harrowing discovery. About six months before Kyron went missing, Kane's wife, Terry, had allegedly tried to hire a landscaper to kill him. I didn't believe it at first. Uh, it was something that I couldn't even wrap my head around at the time. Just there had been no indication in your marriage that no. things were that bad or that she was upset with you? No. This whole thing has never been confirmed. I mean, the guy could be making it up, but it's kind of a strange thing to just make up. And I think the police have a little more evidence of it than they share because that's very vague. And Kane, as soon as he heard whatever information they have, he moved out of their house immediately and took their daughter with him. And that same day, Terry called 911 twice. Around 5.15 there was a threats call and around 11.39 there was a call about child custody probably relating to Kiara. However, Kane was not home during either of these calls. Kane actually has full legal custody of Kiara. Whatever information the police have on Terry was definitely enough to get full custody of her. And Kane also filed for a divorce, which was a good move. And he told the police that he thinks his ex-wife Terry actually harmed or took Chiron, which is just terribly sad. I mean, I can't imagine the guilt as a parent just knowing that you let this woman into your house and she may have killed or harmed or just did something not good to your son. I mean, I really cannot imagine how he feels. It's probably terrible. In court, Kane actually testified that Terry suffers from postpartum depression. After she had their daughter, Kiara, she started acting very different. He claimed that she's extremely emotionally disturbed and she's also an alcoholic. A lot of the reports I've read have said that she was really angry at Kane for making her older son move out, which I told you guys about earlier in this video. According to Desiree, she had some serious hostility towards Chiron. Um, actually, Desiree has said she hated my son. And Desiree says they have even documented the hate that 
Terry had towards Chiron. I wish there was some more evidence and information available, but I can definitely see how a stepmother, uh, especially with mental problems like that, may target some of her anger towards this innocent child that Kane loved so much. So Terry actually moved. She tried to completely change her life. In fact, she now goes by Terry Moulton, which is her previous name, her, you know, before she was married. She actually tried to legally change her name to Claire Sullivan, which is a character from one of her mystery murder novels. She said that she needed to start a new life and the new name would allow her to do that. And the court actually denied her. For a while, people didn't know that she was going by Terry Moulton. So this kind of went unnoticed for a little while, but she actually was arrested twice since Chiron went missing. I believe one was for some type of auto theft and the other one was from stealing a gun from a roommate. She has also had a boyfriend since who has filed a restraining order against her and claims that she held a knife to his throat and tried to kill him. She's definitely had a lot of weird encounters with people over the years and most recently, this was actually just in court very recently, they are looking into her being involved in a murder for hire plot from 30 years ago. Apparently she was targeting a man named Sean Ray. He said a strange man with a gun came after him and that Terry yelled, he's here for you. This would have happened back in summer of 1990, so before Chiron was even born. He claims that the two of them were eating Chinese food together actually at a park and just sitting on the grass eating Chinese food when a man came out of a bush with a gun and came after him. Chances are that the longer time passes, Chiron will not most likely come home, but what we can hope for at this point is obviously we'd love for Chiron to come home, obviously, that would be ideal, but it would be you know, best for the family to have some closure to just know what happened at least and to get some justice for Chiron. So I think the main focus needs to be on Terry and bringing her to justice because her behavior is so beyond odd. The reason that they haven't been able to actually, you know, book her for this and charge her for this is because of the lack of physical evidence. There's no body, there's no proof that he was murdered, there's like barely any physical evidence. However, I do have some good news to report. Um, Desiree has recently said that they do have some evidence, some physical evidence that they think you know, will be coming along this year. The investigation has been reopened, recharged and everything, and they really think they're getting close to maybe being able to get some justice for Chiron. His mom says she's more hopeful than she's been in a really long time. And seeing her speak today, she looks strong. I truly believe that justice will come for Chiron in some shape or form. So I really hope that many of you will follow the story and, you know, keep up with this one. I also thought it would be really cool and I haven't thought of doing this before, but if I link um, Facebook page and Twitter for Chiron because I saw the Chiron Twitter account posting today about National Missing Children's Day. I thought it'd be cool if my subscribers just, you know, send them some well wishes. Um, just say you're from the Kendall Ray family and, and send them some type of, you know, love, support, just something to make them smile on their Facebook or Twitter. I think that would be very, very cool. Make sure not to put that in any type of tip thing, just on any type of page that is dedicated to Chiron. Like I said, his mom truly thinks that this might even be solved this year, so keep your eye out. Let's all think positive thoughts that we will finally get justice for Chiron, this poor child. Oh, I'm gonna cry. It just, it makes me so sad because he's so adorable and innocent, and I feel like we've all known a child like Chiron. I, I certainly do. I can think of one person that reminds me a lot of Chiron, and it's just so sad. It happens to the wrong people. It always does, and um, I really, really hope for his family's sake that they get some type of justice and closure for this whole situation. It's just so heartbreaking. I'm going to put a tip phone number in the description box as well as a tip email address. Please do not send any jokes or any fake things there. These are for real tips only. However, if you do think of a tip, no matter how small or silly you may think it is, it might help to crack this entire case. If you think you may have seen him, these are age progressed photos of him as he'd probably look really different now. Probably isn't wearing glasses anymore and it may have have changed quite a bit so just keep your eyes open and if you see anything or think you know anything please um, get that information to the right people anyway you guys I know these videos are heavy but I think they're so important if you would like to support Thorne's effort in fighting back against child predators online please consider buying one of these shirts or hoodies there's a link in the description box make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you like these videos there's definitely gonna be more where is videos coming I have a long list of people that I'm going to I'm already working on their cases be sure to stick around for that. Subscribe if you're not already. I upload new videos on Tuesday, Thursday, and sometimes a surprise video on Sundays. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you're having a great day. Stay safe, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.